I'd like to call tonight's meeting to order. Everyone, please stand for the pledge. so we can hear. Is that better? A little bit. I'm just going to switch here to turn on. Just on the mic. Is your light on? There we go. How's that? I can't hear Any better? <laughs> no, I'm not better. Thank you. Okay. I think you just got to, you got to speak loud enough to get around the plexiglass. Okay. I'll speak up, everyone. Sorry. Um, we got your financials on the list here. Uh, looking for training for active members, uh, auto liability, commercial general liability insurance with town, uh, in incident participation report, and uh, year to date incident participation report. You will get the insurance information as soon as I get it because that's for next year. And that's what? You're looking for insurance information for 2024. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's not dated here, but. So the discussion around town has been the, uh, the lapse in insurance coverage and how that happens and how do we prevent it from happening again. So that's on you. I am reluctant to say anything that implicates our insurance agency but that's where the problem originated we never got a bill we get, never got a notice of cancellation it's a it's an annual bill it's a one-time bill so when we never got a bill they turn around and cancel but we never got a notice of that happening and because it's a one-time bill, it just slips through the cracks. It's not like you have a monthly bill at home. So the problem has been fixed. Insurance was reinstated. Our insurance agency, I don't know if you'd call them owner or uh, 
partner or whatever personally spoke to me three days in a row to make sure it got fixed. Has there been any claims against the town since what, during the lapse? No. Thank you. Is it something that the department can set up as an auto pay going forward so that it isn't something where if there's human error it's a problem? I don't know. I can look into that. I, I don't know off the top of my head. How long are we out? How are we worried without the check? Uh, two and a half months. Well, you paid it and you're insured now. Correct. That's the one. I wrote the check on September 28th. this year? That's not correct. Uh, Brian, are you here? Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah. Brian's got a participation report. Yeah. I How many see. calls were you on this year? Uh, 2022 was uh, 76. I haven't totaled this year's up yet. We've, we've only uh, couldn't respond to two incidents this year where we didn't muster a crew. To this point. Any other questions? We well, had a period of time where you weren't answering calls or couldn't answer calls because of the insurance or were you cut off when the, the right people figured you didn't have insurance? Or? As soon as I noti was notified of no insurance, I placed the company out of service for that duration out of an abundance of uh, caution because with the building and the apparatus not being insured we didn't want to pull that out of the hall and have something that hurt so at that time i, I did pull it out uh, six days was that duration and, uh, and we had no calls for service during that six day period also there was no uh, uh, fire calls for service so as of the first of October, you were back in service? Uh, yes. Yeah. September 28th. September 9th. Yeah. <clears throat> you've answered calls since then? You've answered calls yeah. since then in the last? Yeah. So that would be what, two weeks? You've answered calls in the last two weeks? Yeah. Uh, how many active uh, members do you have? Total? That can go on call. Right now, I'm only down two members. I had a full roster of about 22, and I'm only down two members this year. Difference from last year. So you, you've got you like down two 22 or down down two members from last year. Okay. That's it. So it's We're the same right as now. last year, identical. There's just two less members this year. And we have one uh, coming in to be uh, voted in in our next regular meeting. Any questions? Um, so the reports that were asked for in this letter dated August 14th. Did I miss those in my mailbox? Uh, no, the South Byron's was in there. Byron's has a three-week manager. Scott, the one we did for Jeff. Um, what's each department asking for this year? 
Okay. Yeah. Normally we get together with a couple of members of the town board, which has not happened this year. I don't know why it was bypassed. Uh, we haven't had a chance to sit down with the board to discuss a typical increase. So basically we need to get together like we did last year and sit down with a couple of board members and let them know our forecasted, what our budget looks like, what we're looking for, for the departments. Uh, so it could be clear. Um, I, we saw a review last of the last meeting uh, of a proposed budget, uh, which just showed the same amounts uh, with no increases. Um, and I can tell you honestly, we are looking for some increases. It's, 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 it's up, up above board. Everybody knows. The cost of living has gone up. Insurance, utilities, fuel, maintenance. We can't keep sitting back and getting the same amount of money when everybody else gets pushed up. The town, town board puts their proposal up there and they project increases for insurance, maintenance, utilities, gas. We're the, we're the same thing. We're, we're, we're contracted. Uh, as departments, and we should have the right to show our expenditures and show our increases and what it costs to maintain these fire departments. The equipment cost goes up. Everybody knows fire gear, breathing apparatus. Everything goes up. Our utilities go up. Our insurances go up. Everything goes up. So it's not unrealistic to really ask for increases. We haven't been able to do that because we have not met with the board. Uh, this letter that was sent out was sent to Steve, who's the president of Byron, and Reggie, who's the president of South Byron, but it didn't include the chiefs or a get-together like we did last year. They asked for all the information. I know we have given all the information uh, forward, but we have yet to sit down to say, you know, Just have a conversation with the town board and say, you know, here's what our forecast, here's what we're looking for, so that you can look at it and see our justifications <coughs> where we're at with everything. Yeah. Thank you. You guys in the same situation? Right? We met prior to this meeting. Yeah. Yes, we agree. Can I ask a question? Have yeah. we ever thought about combining the two fire departments to be one instead of two? There's been talk about that for probably 10 years. <coughs> there was a significant study done eight years ago. Ish. Yep. Yeah. Eight or nine years ago, and we, we were talking we a long talk about, about, about fire districts of instead of fire departments, and multiple meetings at the South Fire and Fire Hall, and at the end of it all, nothing changed. I don't know. No, no. There was supposed to be a district. We signed a three-year contract. Right. The guy was supposed to set up a district, and, and we didn't happened. find out till three years later. Oh, and now we got to come down here and ask for money again because the district got pawned off. The district. I wasn't on the board then, but my recollection of going to the different meetings was that the next town board meeting, the supervisor at the time said that he had met with the two fire departments and that they were going to keep the status quo. I'll have to go back and look at the minutes, but there's been a lot of discussion about it. I guess I'm a little bit confused as to why this discussion is happening when we haven't had the meetings with them regarding the budgets and everything else. I understand what happened with the insurance. I don't know if there's something in our contract with the fire departments that would get triggered if there's a lapse of insurance. Mr. Boylan? No, the, the, um, the result of the lapse of insurance, of course, means that they're out of service. If they were out of service, then they're not meeting their obligation under the contract to deliver service. Okay. So is there like a mechanism in there at that point that allows I don't have it in front for... of me, uh, but I don't think so. I, I think it just simply would be a result of being out of service. Okay. Next question, please. If my homeowner's insurance found out that we were last on, our, on the fire company's insurance, would my rates go up because they discovered that it was 
quasi not up? It depends on the company. Could it happen, sir? Almost anything could happen with an oh, insurance it's company. Not, <laughs> come on. He's not an insurance agent either. No, I know that. I, out of respect, I'm asking. So, I, I, don't, I, I can't answer the question. Thank you. I guess there wasn't a whole lot we could do at the time. We could basically be paid, we were paid the budget, you know, to organize for the money back. And, you know, in order to pay for the contract, you know what I mean? So, you know, at that time, what were we to do? You know, we, we didn't have a lot of options. You know, the only option is, you know, the next budget cycle, when we go from here, you know, and, you know, our, our meeting, the, the number that's been, I guess, you know, it isn't a solid budget yet, but the number that's in there right now is a flat number. And I'm sorry, I, I, I only asked that question for the good of everybody here paying the bills, okay? That's the only reason. It wasn't a, it wasn't a shot at anybody. That's, that's what I'm saying, okay? Thank you. Oh. I, I have, sorry, go ahead. Um, to answer the question about service, Byron was not out of fire service. I mean, not even including the town of Byron. When South Byron went out of service, they made arrangements with Stafford to cover their call if something was to happen. So there was no lapse of fire protection. It's just that there was Stafford covering you instead of South Barn at the time. And it could happen any time because of mutual aid, because um, if Byron can't get a crew, they call Alba or Virgin to come in and cover us. And that it's uh, what's called mutual aid, and it's ongoing. And that so you weren't out of uh, fire protection service. It was just that it wouldn't have been South Barn at that short period of time. There are a couple board members that can meet with the fire departments. Who are, the, who are the assigned liaisons for the fire departments this year at this point? Was it Tom? Tom and myself. Oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just, I'm... We met with both departments. We went through both firehouses. <laughs> that was last year or this year? Last, last year. Last year. Last year. At the end of the year for the budget. Yeah, it must have been late summer or late fall. I think late summer. No, but there's a liaison that's assigned at the at the operation or the organization. Organizational meeting at the beginning of the year, et cetera, when people are signed there. I didn't bring all that. I think it was Tom. Yeah. One of them. Tom. It was Tom. Are you able to do that again in the next couple weeks? Yeah, on the microphone. Sure. Okay. I guess the, the contract that we have for fire protection with the individual fire departments doesn't have any provision in there for the insurance lapsing. I'm wondering if that should be something that we put in going forward just to make sure that we're protected from what I understand the fire protection point, but we also have to look at the expenditure for the town and what we're paying for and what we're not receiving. And I'm not saying that we need to do something punitive here. I don't think that we can talk about whose mistake was made, where, what, whatever. I don't think we're going to get a documented answer. But if we can protect the fire, the town moving forward with a provision in the contract, that would seem to be a responsible thing to do fiscally and for fire protection both. <clears throat> What would you want that clause to say? Um, <clears throat> I think. I think a grace period from, from, a, from a budgetary point of view, you pay the fire department a lump sum early in the year, and what would you do if there were no insurance? You've already paid. Them. Um, I just go quarterly. 
guess, I mean, that's the only way to, I mean, that might be the only way to do it. If you negotiate that, yes. Quarterly with a grace period, if there is something that comes up, they have seven business days to remedy or five business days or whatever you think is a reasonable amount of time. Because there are mistakes that are made that are outside of their responsibility, potentially. Right. Well, and the biggest problem I thought was, I don't know how long until the right people were notified that the insurance had left. So if something would have happened in the immediate while they're still giving service, if, if they would have had an incident, I mean, it, it, it could, could have been very uh, some bad happening for the town there. Because obviously we, they, they, they were still in service for quite a while without the church. What liability would the town have had if they had had an incident while they were out on a call with their insurance lab? Labs, excuse me. Can't answer that off the top of my head, Josh, but my, my sense is that if they were the ones who had the insurance, then they would be the ones that would be responsible. Mm -hmm. And that, the, that the, the liability would then fall on their assets. Um, if there were a judgment against them, um, their, their building and so on would be at risk um, to pay the judgment because of the negligence that took place during the time they didn't have any coverage. I, that's just off the top of my head. So that's not totally. No, I, I don't want to say that this is what total legal advice. Right. The if the liability thing, if, if what you said was accurate, and the liability doesn't come back onto the town and it stays on the department and their assets, then from a town standpoint, we need to be more concerned about days in service and and days out of service as opposed to whether they have their own affairs in order, so to speak, if they're protected with enough insurance. Because we don't have anything in there for it. If there's something in there, we have a million dollars per occurrence in here, while well, the town is additionally insured. That's one of the requirements. Yes. That's, so, again, if we're looking at it, from a protecting the town standpoint, maybe the negotiation needs to be, and I'm trying to be fair to everybody here, a quarterly payment as opposed to a lump sum up front with some kind of grace period if there is something in arrears or out of the line and then you know if, if there you know if there is something that dramatically happens, then we have that conversation about Know, going to a single department or having something else happen, but to, to, I feel like there's a talk here that that's what we're considering right here, and I don't know that, I feel like that's kind of a knee-jerk reaction and not having enough study done or enough conversations done about it. So, and, and that, if that obviously Martin is negotiated Tom's spot the meeting with the fire department, and you guys can meet with South Fire and because you have it, we have everything from Byron. <coughs> yes? I believe so. I haven't reviewed it all. We had a meeting with Byron regarding what they're looking for? We, you have all our information. We have not had a meeting. So we need two meetings. No, yeah. well, one single well, meeting. Well, okay. But yeah, right. we, both, we both, just meet this both departments. Group? Both departments. One group, yes. That's what I recommend to. Yes. Yeah. All on the same page. Right. If you pass the tentative budget tonight and then have this meeting, you yeah, can't. No. no, we don't have anything in the <coughs> You can't utilize the amount that's in there is not close to what they They don't want that amount. They want more. Okay. So it can't be just changed at the point. Okay, Pardon me? You guys help me. You've been flat for two or three years, haven't we? Yes. I, I remember like when I first got on, I think it was a 
five thousand dollars more we gave her. Am I right there with that number? Uh, well, we went with a two percent, two percent increase. Uh, so each department is at that would one have been five. At nineteen. Yeah. And the last two or three years have been flat. Yeah, we have not had a substantial increase with either department in quite a few years. The only thing that has transpired uh, recently was the amount that was guaranteed to the fire, fire and fire department for the new animals, which was a five, yeah. like 30,000 a year for five years. 30,000 for five years. And, right, and everything else we have been flat on. We have not had increases to keep us up to date with the expenditures. We almost had to do that to, to finance the ambulance, you know, because they didn't have enough resources to, to do the loan and you know, you know, the loan with bank. So, you know, they needed the guarantee of that so they could recover the asset. Um, and, uh, and then we
Well, we'll meet with you again and go through the numbers. I guess um, without getting into a whole lot now, it's been a, maybe I should say this, but I will. There's been a fair amount of rumor about Boomer Mill and South Byron, about a fair amount of dissension among folk. And I'm surprised you give a number that you're only down two members. I know. I suspected, I expected that number to be a lot more than what it is. Um, so, we'll meet with you, um, you know, get your um, production of production, projections of what your wishes are and whatever, and uh, um, we'll hammer it out and see what we can do. Okay, thank you. Uh, we need to schedule that, and we need to schedule a uh, special uh, meeting for the budget. <coughs> you guys will need to meet by next Tuesday. Yeah, well, we're going to have a special budget meeting. The 18th. Yeah. So, which is a week. So, uh, the 18th is the next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. <coughs> is there any way we can get copies of what the budget is? Because you're all talking about, a lot of us don't know what figures you're talking about at all. In regard to everything or the fire yes. department? Yes. Well, the fire department, I agree with Bob. Look at the cost of gasoline. You know, much less, I mean, we, it's hard to predict how many calls you're going to get in a year. But does anyone in, other than you guys up there know how much money is even being projected for the budget of the fire departments? We don't know. We just said that meeting is where we need to get that information. Can we maybe have copies of that? So, so we can look you want to Whatever's going to be approved. After it's approved. Uh, right? Yeah. After you have a preliminary budget, it should be available. During the process of building it, people can come and listen to you debate it. But until it is in fact a preliminary budget, there's nothing to give them because it's in both in flux. Did you understand that? So we're not, we can't approve even a preliminary tonight because we don't have those numbers. So once we approve a preliminary, then that gets released. And then there's another here. Okay. Thank you. I assume you guys would want to be separately, right? You don't want me. No, they want to be together. No, yeah. together. Together. Together? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay, last time we talked to uh, We could probably do it Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. Where you want to meet? This Thursday? Like tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. We meet town of Bird. We're going to got to do it Thursday or Tuesday if we're going to have it by next Wednesday. We really don't want to meet on the weekend. Too, guys. I'm fine with Thursday evening. Tomorrow. Tomorrow evening. You've got to do this. Does that work for you? It works for me. You good with it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I can, if I get a meeting Take tonight. Take your meeting, I don't care. Do it. Thursday or Tuesday? Or Tuesday? That's mm -hmm. what they said. Thursday or Tuesday. Tuesday's going to be better. Tuesday? Okay. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday at 7. Is that okay yeah. with you, Bob? Yeah. That's Where at Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Right what's here. The, what's the date? The 17th. 17th? 17th. Want to we'll be right here? 7 o'clock. Sure. Okay. 7 o'clock next Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. Meet at one yeah. of the fire departments. Yeah. To let you in. Well, rock, paper, scissors, shoot, which one do you want to go to? If you want to get a bar, we can get a bar. All right, we're going to go 7 o'clock Tuesday. Yeah, okay. Where are we going to do it, Barry? Right. 7 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 I need a motion for a special meeting for the budget. So on October 18th? Yes. At 7 o'clock. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Walker's Corners Road at the existing main 
filled and pressure tested Cockrum Road and Bank Street roads. In the next two weeks, they'll be finishing Walker's Corners and testing Tower Hill and Byron Roads. Uh, Pylon, Contractor A, anticipates mobilizing the week of October 23rd. They're confident they'll get uh, the project done on time, which is in April. Uh, they will supply a schedule to the town in the next few days. That was the funds that we withheld last month. Um, it was for that contractor, yes. So, um, so I need a resolution, a couple of resolutions. We, no, but none of those is going to that pylon. No. no. Right. Okay. Off of the following resolution, the move for its adoption be resolved that the Byron Town Board hereby approves and authorizes the supervisor to sign the contractor's application for payment number five to Rochester Pipeline Inc. in the amount of $371,296.48 for construction of water improvement benefit area number one. Second. Motion uh, pull the board. Uh, Eric Martin. Yes. 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 Passed. I offer the following resolution move for its adoption be resolved that the Byron Town Board hereby approves and authorizes the supervisor to sign form E number three for water improvement benefit area number one. Um, we'll pull the board. Eric. Aye. Martin. Yes. Yes. Passed. Uh, sewer report. Installed new covers at the old school house lift station and on Walker's Corners Road lift station. Switch valving at sewer beds. Uh, lab surcharge testing is increasing by 12.5% beginning with October 2023 labs. Motion to approve. All in favor? Right. Sewer report passed. Uh, planning board report. Planning board met last week. Uh, the discussion for the special use permit for Roger and Karen Zinsky was referred back to the Zoning Board of Appeals because there was a pre existing non conforming use there um, going back decades. Um, there was a land separation approved. Uh, sale land from Don Hahn to uh, Cole Carlson that was approved and the discussion on the zoning law was uh, tabled until the following meeting so they could do some more uh, reading on Paul's suggestions and that was it a short and sweet 15 minutes I think motion to approve okay. so uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, highway superintendent. They, they have nothing to report, I guess. Uh, CEO, ZEO report, Melissa. Uh, nine new permits, one complaint for unregistered vehicles, one special use permit for home based general events, and one land separation. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Park Committee report. We had a meeting October 5th, and uh, the business portion of that meeting said that uh, Dave Leeton reported to George that the town will plant five larger trees, either maple or oak, along McAlver Street. So Dave further advised that there would be no cost to us for this purpose. And um, the affordable toilets will be removed from Trussell Park by mid October. So they are gone. Okay. And the project list for 2024, uh, Dave Leighton spoke with George about continuing to monitor the dock at Trussell Park. The dock posts may need or may require adjustment or possible replacement. 
Chris, do you have another? Okay, thank you. And they did put money in the budget for that. So. Motion to approve. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstracts. I offer the following resolution and move for its adoption. Resolve that the Byron Town Board pay the following abstracts. General Fund Abstract Number 10, vouchers 191 through 208, in the amount of $10,512.76. Highway Fund Abstract Number 10, vouchers 81 through 90, in the amount of $25,342.19. Sewer Fund Abstract Number 10, vouchers 54 through 57, in the amount of $8,917.02. Water, water Improvement Benefit Area Number 1, Abstract 10. Vouchers 24 and 25 in the amount of $386,155.58. General Post Audit Fund Abstract Number 9. Vouchers 58 through 63 in the amount of $3,095.27. And Sewer Post Audit Fund Abstract Number 9. Vouchers 26 and 27 in the amount of $521.77. Thank you, Josh. Second. Uh, Old board. Eric. Uh, Martin. Yes. Yes. Passed. Uh, Tom Clerk report. $75 was paid to Agamarkets Markets for the spay neuter program. $1,293.46 was paid to the DEC for running and fishing. $2,250 was paid to the Department of Health for marriage licenses. $4,150.54 was paid to the supervisor for a total of $5,494.50. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tom Clark's report passed. Uh, financial report for September. Everyone good with it? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Financial report passed. Uh, supervisor's report, Water District number one, bookkeeping request adjustments. Uh, we have a resolution. Well, I'll the follow resolution move for its adoption. Be resolved that Tom Byron Board hereby approves the authorization of BBS Accounting LLC to make the following accounting adjustments. Water District one, capital account, account balance of $93.92 should have been paid back in the general fund for the original setup cost of the district. Directing entry post to the general ledger for the original setup cost of the district. Directing entry post $93.90 to the S.W.1-9901.9 and the post $93.92 to A5031 to return the money to the general general fund. Water district cap number seven, capital account balance of $27,719.24 should have been transferred to the general fund A to pay back the original attorney and engineering fees that were paid out to the general fund to start the district and were not paid back. Post $27,719.24 to HW7-99 01.9 and post $27,719.24 to A501, A5031. Water District number eight, capital account balance of $1,103.66 should have been transferred to the general fund to pay back the additional costs associated with the attorney, attorney fees and the financial audit conducted in charge to the capital district but had town townwide benefits post one thousand one hundred three dollars and sixty cents to a nine nine oh one point nine and post one thousand one hundred three dollars and sixty six cents to hw point eight five oh three one second thank you um full board eric Hi. Aye. 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 Uh, we got uh, new prices for the transfer station uh, between Casella and Waste Management. 
is the percent increase on Casella, it's 6% for 25 and 8% in 26. Is 8% off the initial amount or 8% off the 6% increase in 25? Yeah. I mean, either way, I think waste management is cheaper with, with those increases, but it's significantly cheaper if it's 8% off the additional 6% as well. That's why I figured <coughs> waste, it was, it was close to the first year, they're both about the same. But by the second year, it goes over. Yeah. The seller goes over, and by the third year, it was yeah. significantly over. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I didn't see it on here. No, he didn't. It was a verbal thing, but he told me it was a 6 and 8%. Not on the contract. So again, but my figures, the six percent increase puts the uh, price per month of the thirty yard up to two sixty five next year, which is three dollars less. And it goes up to like 636 for the eight yards. And that's more than waste management, and you're only getting four instead of five. Casella couldn't give me a price on the glass bin either, so. Yeah. So that makes so, it one short. So that's. The, the first year we're spending a little bit more, but the year two and three we're yeah. saving quite a bit. So. So earlier in the year, you had numbers of how much you made with, uh, or how, where you stood with that. So what's the situation now with those increases? Still in good shape, or? I remember you had numbers before. We haven't really figured that part of it out yet. We just got these numbers today. They've been dragging They're terrible. <laughs> and usually we do it at the beginning of the year. I think those numbers are kind of based off of what these numbers are, I think. Yeah. That'll be the price yes, of the tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. How many tags are sold? Right. How much we get for scrap depends what the price of scrap is if it's down or up because that is usually what carries us is the scrap. Item. I was. Can I ask a question, real quick. Yeah. Thank so you. I, I don't understand the verbal agreement. First of all, sir, with taxpayer money, is that allowed? Is that how we do business in the town of Byron? It's a verbal agreement with a contract should be on paper for the town. It is. Review. It, it is. is. It's just that six and eight percent work. Well, I, the contract you do make a curveball because I don't understand yeah. the verbal agreement. Yeah, no, there's a contract, but it's written. It just wasn't written on that. That's what they called me yet today. About Thank you. It. Thank you. So I would offer the following resolution move for its adoption. Resolve that the Byron Town Board hereby approves the contract for refuse and roll-off services between the town and waste management from January 1, 2024 to December 31, 2026 for the figures of $634 a month for five eight-yard containers, $268 plus $82.70 a ton for a 30-yard roll-off and $125 container usage per month. Any other discussion? Herb? Has anybody contacted Schofields for a price comparison like we did? No. Because when we were pricing the farm stuff, there was a big difference. Plus, Schofield is local. Your company in Virgin is a collaborative. Why not support the local people and at least get a price quote? Get get three people. We did it, you know, at the farm and it's free. Especially you still have time. You got time till January. See what Bruce has to offer. Plus he's a scrapyard. What better can he get? The other place is not a scrapyard. You can get this resolution and get another one. And if it changes, you can do that. Mm, just table the vote on this one. Okay, you can vote on it, but you can resend it if it's lower. If it's lower. Okay with that? Yeah. So that we get another 
Can you solicit a, a quote from Schofield before the next one? See, yeah, see if he wants to. Last time I did, he wasn't interested, so I'll do it again. See if he wants to. So. Um, full board on this resolution. If, say, keep this resolution. Vote on this resolution. If Schofield is lower and you want to use Schofield, just rescind this resolution. Can go to the other one? Wednesday would be. Okay. Thank you. Can you tell me who the liaison is to the Historical Society? out of state so we can just throw everything at him. <laughs> I'm just curious because usually someone will speak with the society and give us an idea of what you're looking for or, or if you have questions it about what you're looking for. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I was wondering, I um, had a sense request in under the Freedom of Information Act, and I was wondering when I would get a response back uh, on that email I sent last week. Okay, unless somebody wants to answer those questions. Now I can ask. Somebody's got the answers. And it, that only came about uh, due to the budget meeting excuse me, workshop two weeks ago when so much money was designated last year and then more money was spent and no bids were discussed by the board. So, I don't know, does anybody want to answer that? It's in regards to the pavilion. I don't have anything in front of me to answer it. Pardon me? I don't have anything in front of me to answer it. What is the question? I'm sorry. Well, the, so I never, I went, reviewed all of the um, information on public, or the, the past board minute meetings, et cetera. I couldn't find anything in the minutes after saying, a uh, statement saying that bids were gonna be, re be sought for the pavilion and then no discussion was ever documented that I could see or anything discussed. I know we had two bids. But they were never discussed at any meeting. Yeah, I believe they were. I think the one was passed. Can you tell me what? Oh, well, anyway, I can wait for the information. I guess. Okay. Jeff, this is gentleman here. Can you tell me when the water line's going to be started to be installed down around Cook Road? Uh, we were told. I can't to tell you Cook Road. The contractor for your area is starting in a week and a half. Okay. We had a call from him today. The, the schedule. The, the reason I ask is when Monroe County Water Authority was here, they said we may have the water line there, but we won't have water until April of next year. They said but, it would start by the middle of October when they've already cashed our check. And we got a letter from the town stating that all Byron would have water by the end of 2023. Their substantial completion is the end of April. By contract, that's when everyone is supposed to have water. Uh, everyone on the board believed you would have water by now. They, they ran water by my house two or three months ago, and I still don't have it turned on. 
<laughs> so, um, when I when this was first started, we had the meetings up to the South Fire and uh, Fire Hall. I talked to you because we have people down there when they did the water testing. Absolutely, do not drink your water. We have people who have horses, and we have one that takes care of animals. They have to buy water every summer. <coughs> and it was said that we might be one of the first ones to get water, and it looks like we're going to be the last ones. I've been trucking my water in for eight years. And the tough part is when the contract goes out, they if the low bid gets it, that's kind of out of our hands. It's, it, it's uh, job specific to what they're doing. They, they, and I just a little bit that they've had, they, you know, they're back on another job, and I feel your pain too because I have want water at my house too. It's not it, it's when it is coming. Okay. Could we get appointed a new liaison for the historical society since we don't have one now? Um, yeah, is anyone in, you interested? <laughs> <laughs> you got me for two more months, guys, whatever you want me to do. Yeah, we'll take Josh. <laughs> Let me know when the meetings are. <laughs> Jeff, is yeah. there any new information on the uh, Excelsior Solar that you have? Nah. No. Any new information on the uh, the Dollar General? Where you're at with that? Not. There's not much for the town to do at okay, that I point. Okay, I was just wondering Once if you had anything. It's, it would it's be code enforcement in as the building is going up and everything, but. That much for the town to be doing. Another question then: um, How many new, or how many board member seats are going to be available at the election? To two, two board and the supervisor. Who are the two board members not running? Uh, the book ends here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for. Your service, please stay. <laughs> Jeff, I'd like to have an executive session to discuss litigation strategy in regard to zoning enforcement. Um, I'd like to know on the old business, last month I had to attend a different town board meeting. What's your procedure for electing uh, the board member to replace Tom? Um, in the past, it, I mean, it's up to the board pretty much to do as they will. Um, we'll look at any anybody who's interested in the board votes on it. I don't know if there's a, a standard guideline to go by. I was just wondering because I submitted a letter of intent. Yep. There was four of us. When I came to the town hall to submit the letter, I was told that, that not to leave one, to take it to the Republican committee that they were handling it. And that was also verified in the paper on the Batavia. So I submitted it to the Republican Committee. Because I registered as a Democrat when I was still in high school, I vote for whoever is best, and I will not change my party. So since I am a Democrat, I could not be interviewed with the Republican Committee because of their bylaws, that they will only endorse a Republican. So I watched the video news to see who was selected. But in the meantime, not one single board member asked me one single question. I was never asked to attend a meeting 
to for selection and even on the video news Josh brought it up aren't we going to discuss are the four candidates shouldn't we discuss who's going to be selected and our supervisor Pete said no I mean is that what's going to go forward with this board where it's it's a biased decision because they're Republican and not anybody on the entire board even asked me shouldn't the board come up with some kind of rules even with the planning department I brought up several meetings when a planning department member steps back I said to the board what's your protocol on selecting none and I didn't even receive a letter saying sorry you're not selected which I don't care whether I was selected or not but you never even notified who wasn't selected and the same thing with the planning board decisions that this town board is making you don't say how the procedure is done and and if you're not selected you're not notifying those people of the community that do want to serve going forward how can we fix this or is it going to continue for another how many years regardless of the process it still comes down to the board the board voted on who they wanted I'm going to push back on that a little bit the the process of even considering a candidate for Tom's position wasn't on the agenda for that last meeting and it wasn't on it wasn't on the agenda that's on the website it wasn't on our agenda that we're given when we come into the meeting and that resolution was offered before we even approved the minutes from the previous meeting which I will go back and look again but I would think that's the first time that we've done anything prior to approving the minutes from the last meeting so you know I did try to pump the brakes there and, and again it had nothing to do with the candidate but everything to do with the process and you know I voted no again not because of exactly who was up for the position but that process was not in my opinion what it should have been at the very least it should have been on the agenda so that we all knew it was coming the candidates would know that if they were under consideration at that meeting and you know if the Republican committee everything that they get presented is rubber stamp because there's a number of Republicans on the town board I understand but at the same time all the candidates should be considered and at least given their due time to explain why they should be considered for the position you know I couldn't even get an answer from the supervisor or Jim Northrup was at the last meeting and he's on the Republican committee as to why you know that candidate was their pick you know just give me something mm -hmm. like some reason as opposed to cuss. I I have the same frustration as a lot of people in the in this room because there there didn't seem to be any kind of due process or anything else. It was just whatever we decided at that moment, or not we, the supervisor decided at that moment for that procedure. One of the questions that was asked at the last meeting was what the process was. And I, I know that the Republican committee explained their position and, and you know, while you were talking, Barb, I looked at the press release that's in the Batavian, and it's not coming from the town of Byron board, it's coming from the town of Byron Republican committee, and they have their own bylaws and their own rules and everything that they have to do, and that's fine. You know, they, they can do whatever they want. They're their own committee. I believe they're elected. You know, whatever the Republicans in town want them to do, that's fine. But the idea that they get to just 
dictate to the board what happens, this still doesn't fit, sit right with me. So. That was my concern. When I came here to drop off my letter of intent, it was not accepted because they were instructed to drop off the letter of intent to the Republican committee. So I also, on my own behalf, going against what was told by the, the clerks here, by the supervisor, I sent each board member my letter of intent anyway, by mail, snail mail. Plus I was endorsed by the Democratic committee that was never brought up. The town of Byron and in New York State should be considering both the Democrats and the Republicans, but that was never once brought up at all. Independence, anybody else? They and independence, whether you're... I, can, can, I chime Justin, in? can I chime in? I seen the, on the Batavian that one day or two days it was on there. There was two phone, two, two phone numbers to call if you're interested. It was gone the next day. I'm so glad we have what we have. But with that being said, she's right. She's right. It was shortcut. It should have been a, a it should have been a review process. Well, well, yeah, I'm not, not wishing that. But what was on the Batavian was from the It was at the, the bottom of it if you the, the Byron Republican the bottom committee. Of it, yes, sir. Yeah. And then it said if you're interested right. in And in, in there were two yeah, it's still off the there. It just it moves off the first page. It's still there. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, yeah. It was down at the bottom. It went down at the bottom. But then it, with Garvis, it was up for like two days and that was it. Gone. Over. She's right. She's right. There should be a there should be a there should be someone looking at it. A bunch of people looking at it. Who do we want? We I'm glad who we have, believe me, but we had the right. we just She's didn't right. have the discussion. And the discussion needed to be done. Uh, okay. The way I understand this works, say it's all in. Say, say Steve Pauly gets in an accident, he can't complete it. He's a Democrat, he's a Republican. So the Republican Party submits his replacement to Albany to finish his term. Same thing is if somebody in New York City gets in an accident and gets killed and they're a Democrat, the Democratic Party would submit that name or submit their name. Uh, what is the, the Congresswoman? The, actually, the governor of that state is the one that, so, you know, I mean, Washington didn't say, you know, you, we want to pick somebody from your state. It's actually the party that's uh, that person runs through and that and that's that's the way it works above us you know. so i i would assume that it probably works that way here it does not well unless yeah. unless there's something that's a different so. no it doesn't putting it putting it down to the republican committee i mean if you wanted <laughs> the republican committee's candidate that was endorsed for supervisor lost the last two primaries. So you could argue that the Republican committee doesn't actually represent the majority of the Republican party. So the idea that, I mean, it's a fairly significant position on the board, especially when there's only five of us. And to think, how many, Karen, there's nine of you on the Republican committee now? Yes, and I mean, we were supposed to consider the candidates and our bylaws would only allow us to pick a Republican, right. but we were supposed to recommend it to the board, and then the board make the decision. Again, I don't, I'm not faulting anything that the Republican committee did. They're within their own bylaws. I don't know exactly what the town laws are, but I agree the process is, <coughs> I mean, there were, there were four candidates? Four. four. Right. And we didn't, we didn't even have discussion on the one that was appointed. Mm -hmm. there was, I asked a few questions and didn't get any answers. So, vote. I mean, I, you brought this up at the planning board meeting, Barb, about the way things are done. <coughs> Everybody up here is elected. If you don't like us, you can fire us. Thank you. I have one other question. 
Um, <coughs> regarding the insurance, does the town have a blanket insurance policy currently? What's in the, as far as I know, we have a liability insurance policy. I don't know the amount, but there is one in force to protect the town from liability of any employee or uh, any dangerous situation. There is a, I don't know whether you would qualify that as a blanket policy. All right, because the way that, this is just my personal, the way that the farm works is that we have individual insurance plus we each have a blanket policy so then no matter what, that you're covered, especially the town. If something does happen with the fire department, guess who they're also going to bring in? <coughs> the town. The, 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 the fire department <coughs> policy makes the town an additional insured. Now with the agent, Normal agents for any insurance policy, especially a large one, comes out two months before the policy is up for review for the next year. I fault the, the agent. He should be coming out and saying, okay, you're building, well, we're going to give you credit because you got a new roof. Okay, we're going to do this because of this safety factor. Every insurance agent comes out two months ahead of time to review your policy before it's up for review. In my personal opinion, if you're going to go with quarterly payments, you have more of an error paying four times instead of one time. So why not have that agent come out two months in advance, put it as part as the town rules, okay, before the renewal period, <coughs> we want to see the insurance age, uh, paperwork from each department to verify ahead of time to make sure that you have the proper insurance and just make sure that the payment. But I fault the insurance agent. If you're going to be collecting your commission, you should be doing some work. Not the fire department. Shame on anybody that blames the fire department. Shame on you. We're volunteers. We don't even get a dollar for gas when we go on calls. Mutual aid is here to protect us all. We're all supposed to band together, not fight. Thank you. Thank you. That's any, all I have. Any other comments? I don't think we're as much fighting Barb as figuring out how it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Well, that's what I got from you. So they're, they're hard to questions, to but they can't go unasked. It just seemed very harsh in the early meeting. Yep. Because we're all volunteers, and, and all it takes is a, a bad attitude. And I could say, hmm, look at the money I'm saving. I'm staying home. So would you rather not have the conversation? No, but but it's something. But like the fire none department. Of, none of us like grilling Fred either. But it's got to be done. It just can't happen again. Totally agree. But yeah. I also fought, fought the board. Tom left, Tom was the liaison, so was Eric. When are they going out to see what the fire department's doing this year? What, except for right now, when it's under the crunch. The board should be going to the fire department and saying, hey, what do you need? What can we do to help you? Absolutely. I would encourage you guys to get a chance um, Oh, you're so good with Google. Um, <laughs> put up George Washington's farewell address and read in there his comment on political parties. And his prophecy has come to fruition, the one he said in that farewell address. And uh, I'll agree with you, Bart, but uh, what, what political parties are doing in this country right now? not only in this town, but in this country is a travesty. And we're seeing it in Washington right now. And, and Mr. George Washington predicted this 250 years ago. What did he exactly predict? Huh? I mean, what did he exactly predict? Basically, well, really specific? Good. Basically says political parties are bad for the country. Yeah. 
drag the shrivel out there. That no any particular reason? reason? That because what you see what's going on right now. Is you see what this conversation is in this room? Because mm -hmm. it's dividing us. Yeah. And then it becomes a question, is your allegiance to the town or to the party? Or the country to the party? Or whatever mm -hmm. municipality or whatever you want. Well, we can have that semantic argument for a long time. <laughs> but if everybody else is good, I would make a motion to go into executive session at 817. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.